Hey everyone, and welcome to the first video in this new tutorial series where you're going to learn how to make a typing game in Godot. My name is Joe, and I'm really excited to start this one off with you. In this video, we're going to learn how to handle player input, how to add enemies with text, and then how to match what the player types to the text underneath an enemy. Let's get started. So I've already created a new project that's empty right now. It just has a main scene that's just a node TD. I also added an assets directory that has the space shooter pack from Kenny, as well as the space mono font that I grabbed, just so that we have a nice looking font that we can use. So the first thing that we want to do is actually add a background. So I'll click on our main and I'll add a texture rect. And what we'll do with this is I'm going to expand it to just take over a little over the outside of the camera. And I'm going to come up to uh, the space shooter backgrounds folder grab the blue background and add that in there. And I'm going to check the expand box so it will expand. And you'll see it looks pretty bad right now, but we can change the stretch mode to be tile and then it'll just nicely keep tiling for as big as we stretch it. So I'll just make it a little bit bigger so we have some room to work with. There you go. And if I run that, you'll see it looks pretty nice and we've got a nice background. So the next thing I'm gonna do then is add an enemy. So I'll add a sprite over here and I'll call this enemy. Now I'll come down to the space shooter directory, find the sprite sheet and drag that in, oh, whoops, drag that in to our texture. And I'm gonna enable the texture region, come in here. And so I've already selected this one here. I had to bump my step down to one pixel both ways just cause these are packed in pretty tightly. The other thing too is to make sure that you've imported this as the 2D pixel preset so that you'll, you won't you will get any lines that blur together because of the filter that's added. So now that we have that and we have our texture region established, we've actually got an enemy. So I'm gonna drag our enemy over here. And then as a child of our enemy, I'm going to add a rich text label. And this is gonna be the thing that actually handles all of our input. It'll display what the user needs to type and then it'll handle changing colors and other effects as the user actually types. So let's start by moving our rich text label to be positioned below our enemy. And then we'll just put some basic text just to have a placeholder for now. Type this. For this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to use special characters and capital letters, even though most typing games get around that by just forcing everything to be lowercase or everything to uppercase, just in case you have a use case where you do wanna use you know, capital and lowercase letters and special characters. Now, a couple things that we want to do are first turn the scroll active off so that we'll, we won't have a, a scroll bar on a rich text label. Next, we need to enable BB code. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to have multiple colors within our text at the same time, which we're going to want to do to give the user feedback on what they've currently typed and what their the, the next letter that they need to type is. So you can only use BB code and have multiple colors in your text within a, sim, a single label in a rich text label, which is really nice. The downside though is that unlike a regular label, a rich text label does not resize itself, so we have to manually give it its size. So what I'm gonna do is just drag it right here and just get that middle dot right in the middle. And then we'll just have to make sure that we don't give any prompts to the player that would take over this box. And so what we're gonna have to do is actually give our text here and if you haven't used BB or BB code before, excuse me, it'd be good to look it up pretty quick. But what it is is you basically give these bracket tags to give your text certain things. And we'll always want to center it. So we'll have to use the center tag here and we can recreate our previous text and say type this. And then I can get rid of this up here. There we go. Oops. Okay. So if we do this, we'll see that we have centered text. Um, it's a little small though. And we'd like to give it our custom font. So I'm gonna come down to our custom font, select our normal font, and I will make a new dynamic font, and then drag in for the font resource, our space mono. And I'm gonna bump the settings up a little bit, or the size, let's do 24. And then, so what I'm gonna do is just expand our rich text label a little bit. And we'll see that's pretty much perfect. So I think what we're gonna try and do uh, let me make this a little bit bigger both ways. What we'll try and do is just keep each prompt to be uh, maybe one one word with a special character and a capital just to give it a little bit of a challenge. 
and then we'll make sure that it always stays within our box that we've set up. So now we can get input actually and get that set up. So I'm gonna add a script to our main scene, just called main. First thing I'm gonna do here is just get a variable and reference this to our active enemy. So basically what this is, is once we start typing the word for a single enemy, we kinda wanna lock in until the player is done with that enemy. We'll set this to null for now. And I'm also going to get the unhandled input, whoops, unhandled input function here. And then we're gonna say if event is input event key. So only if it's a keyboard event and event dot is action pressed or is action released. Oh, whoops. Sorry, that's not element is pressed and not pressed. So we're only gonna get this when the key stroke actually goes up. So when the user releases it, and what that does is it prevents getting repeat key events if it's being held down. So now I can just enter pass here for now. And so we're gonna need a couple things. One thing we're gonna need is a variable that we'll call current letter index. This will be an integer and we'll set it to negative one. And this is just gonna keep track of in the current string that we're typing for the active enemy, how far along are we, which character are we looking at? And we're also gonna need a function called uh, find new active enemy and eventually this is going to need to take in a character we type so once we start typing a character we're going to look through the active enemy or the current enemies that are spawned to see if any of them start with that character right now we'll just do pass so let's now get the input that the user types so the first thing we can do is say var typed event and we'll just set this equal to event as input event key and so we know that an event at this point is a input event key, but we can just do this to get an actual typed um, variable that we can use for better auto completion. And now we will actually get the uh, letter that the user types. So this is gonna be, we're gonna make a new pool byte array, which is just an array uh, that's memory optimized. It basically is just an array of bytes. And we're gonna create it from an array that will only contain one thing, which will just be typed event, that Unicode. So we're just gonna create a, a byte array from the Unicode character that we typed. And pool byte array comes with this really nice get string from UTF-8 method, which will then convert that Unicode character into an actual string. So we could use, there's also a get string from ASCII method, but it's better just to use the UTF-8 to handle other characters that somehow might get typed, uh, or that a user might type outside of just the ASCII table. So now we've got the character that the user typed and we're ready to start implementing find new active enemy so we can actually compare it against the prompt displayed underneath an enemy. In order to do that, let us under this line say if active enemy is null. So if we don't have an active enemy, we're gonna have to do find new active enemy. And so now we can start implementing this here and eventually we'll probably have a, a enemy container up here, but all we have to do now um, just because this is temporary, I'll just reference our enemy within this. We'd say enemy.getPrompt. So our enemy does not have a script yet, but we can add that right now. So I'll come into our enemy, enemy, geez, cannot talk today. And we'll move this up, get rid of all this. I'll say on ready var prompt, and I'm going to set this to be equal to our rich text label. And then I'll say on ready var prompt text, which is rich text label dot text uh, actually just let me do prompt and get rid of that so within a rich text label uh if you try and do prompt dot get bb code you'll get all the bb code bb code tags in that string but if you just want to get the actual text itself with all the bb code tags removed you can do prompt dot text to get that so now that we have this let's implement that function that we were calling so we'll say function uh, get prompt. This won't take any parameters and it will return a string. And what we'll do is just say return prompt text. There we go. Great. So now if I go back to our main script here, we this will be getting us a string. And so what we can do, um, well, eventually we'll need to check and make sure there's actually an enemy that has that string. But what we can do now is say bar prompt is equal to this and um, we can pass in uh, typed character which will be a string here and we'll pass in key typed so now when we get in here we can say if 
prompt uh, dot get character or whoops. So what we want to do here is check uh, is the first character of the prompt the same character that was typed. So what we want to do here is say if prompt dot substring and then we always want the first character. So we'll start at an index of zero and we'll go a length of one. So just that one character. So if the first character of the prompt equals what was typed, then we will say active enemy equals enemy. There we go. Okay, so now we're gonna check for a new enemy and, um, oh, whoops, I need to capitalize that. So now we're gonna check for a new enemy with that prompt and if it matches, then we'll see that we have new enemy. So what I can do is just print new enemy. Okay, so now if I do this, we can see if I type a capital T, it'll say new enemy. If I type anything else, it won't, but there we go, cool. Now we just need to handle actually getting other characters. So to do that, uh, I'll get rid of this print statement and then say current letter index equal to one because we've already handled the zero with character. And oh, I totally, I accidentally put the uh, comparison operator here, uh, equals not the actual equals. So we'll actually set our active enemy now. And then down here, whenever we type new input, um, our active enemy won't be null. So we want to handle that. And basically what we're going to do is say var prompt and we'll do the same thing we did above. So active enemy i get prompt and we will say our next character equals prompt dot substring and here what we're going to do is current letter index so we'll get the next character from wherever we're at and now we can actually check and see if that was the character that the user typed so we'll do if key typed equals next character print success. We'll also need to make sure that when we do this that we increment our current letter index so we'll set that to plus equal one and then one other case that we really need to make sure we handle is when we get to the end of our word. So we can say if current letter index is equal to prompt dot length so if we are at the end what we can do is say current letter index equals negative one just to reset it something invalid and then we can say active enemy dot q free and then we can set active enemy to be equal to null so then we're going to basically reset and then next time input is typed we'll be back here because our active enemy will be null so this will mean this will just help that when we get to the end of our text it'll basically reset and at this point so I'm gonna add a couple more logs just to make it a little bit easier to see what's going on since you can't see what I'm typing. So I'm gonna change this to be successfully typed. I'll do percent %s for string and then do uh, percent. And then we'll say key typed. And then if we are not successful, we will say else print uh, incorrectly typed percent %s instead of percent %s. And here we will set it to be incorrectly typed key typed instead of next character and then if we get here we'll just say print done cool okay and then i guess also in this one we'll say print found new enemy that starts with we'll do percent s just do percent and then say uh let's let's also do we'll say next character same as we did before down below prompt that substring whoops zero one and then we'll change this to be next character there we go and we will set that there okay Whew. debugging by logs by printing it is a tried and true age-old method a wonderful way to program so now that we've got that kind of the one last thing i think i want to do in this video is actually handle dynamically finding enemies. So what I'm gonna do is add a node to D here. I'm gonna call this enemy container. We'll bump this up here and I'm gonna make our enemy a child of our enemy container. And then in our script here, we'll actually get a reference to that container. So on ready var enemy container and we'll set this equal to enemy container. And then what we will do here is say, uh, for uh, enemy in enemy container dot get children 
and then we will say if uh all right yeah then we can just pretty much tab what we have here so i'll just do that so we'll say so for we'll, we'll basically if we have multiple enemies on the screen it's just going to go through our enemy container and it'll say all right for each one if um if that enemy's prompt starts with this character then we will set the next character to be that we will find an enemy and we will set our active enemy to be the enemy we found and it should because as we're spawning new enemies in it should add them to the end here so this should helpfully make sure that we are finding if multiple enemies start with the same letter that we're finding the one closest to getting to the end once we actually start implementing enemy movement so that should feel good so let's make sure that this works i'll open this up and i can type there we go all right so i type capital T and I found it and now I can type Y P E space and if I type wrong letters we'll see it's incorrect if I type T we'll do this and we should see our enemy go away there we go so we have all the code in there to handle detecting an enemy uh, typing it or typing the prompt there and, and picking that up in the next video we'll actually handle spawning enemies and showing visual feedback on what you type by changing the color of the text